Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of the JS 13 kilobyte games tutorial series. So let's continue with our game and add our player. So we've loaded already our player file and what I'm going to do is create a new sprite that we can use for our player. So I'm going to call that variable player and contra.sprite then the location will be on X, it's going to be 120. On Y, it'll be 240, which will place it about in the middle of the space we have. And the image would be in this case contra.images.player, just like the name of the file player. So we've got our player. And if we want our player to actually sh show on the screen and to update its position, if we, for example, give it a velocity, we need to include it here because what, what happens if I don't do that? So if I don't do that, even though we create our sprite, it's, we can't see it anywhere. So uh, we do need to uh, uh, render it, in this case, player.render. And it needs to be rendered after the background because otherwise the background sits on top. So there we go, we've got our player in there. And because the player will um, will have its position updated, you also need to include it, for example, if you give it a speed, you need to include it in an update so that the, even if it has a speed, if you're not updating it, it's not gonna move. So um, what we need to do next is add the ability of for the user to control the player and move it around. So, and, and we do that in here in update. So what I'll do is listen for some key pressed. So Contra includes a module called keys that allows you to quickly know if a key was pressed or not. So for example, if the app key was pressed, this expression will be true. And therefore, um, therefore, we can modify the position of the player. For example, if it's uh, if it's up, that's going on a negative direction. So from bottom to top, to uh, to top is negative. So we can, for example, change it in one. Let's see if that works. So that actually sent it really, really far away. And it is because we actually don't need to we, we didn't we didn't have to set the 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 position like that we actually need to just modify it so we just need to modify the current position we don't need to set it in absolute terms so there we go so now we can move our player up if if we want um what if you wanted to allow the user to move the player the other direction so I'm gonna add this in as an else if because you you're not gonna be having both at the same time. Although if you have both at the same time, maybe you will want the player to stay in the same place. So let's let's set it like that. So let's refresh and see how now I can move my player. So I could easily um, I could easily add also side movements, but in this this game is unidirectional, so or we're only moving in one direction. Um. So what I want to add now is the end of the game if the player reaches this area or somewhere here. So I'm gonna do something similar to what you already did in your first challenge. So I'm gonna check that the position of the player, if the position of the player is less or equal than 40, I'm going to stop my game, I'm gonna pause my game and you can do that by Post game by uh, just typing in oops, loop or loop variable. Remember, loop dot stop. That will stop the loop, and uh, we can we can show a message to the user in this way, and you can say you won. So that's the goal of the game is to reach that part, and then uh, you can either just stop there, um, or you can restart the game. A quick way to restart the game would be to just refresh the page. So we can do window.location and just set it like that. So let's see how that works. Let's go all the way up and we won the game and the page refreshes. So 
there you go. So we got we have basic um, player movement. So now it's um, challenge time for you. Your challenge here will be to add enemies and put them in different locations and make them move to the sides and bounce. So the same thing that you did with your with what you did with the rectangle. Add uh, a couple of enemies and make them bounce on each side. So create two sprites, one for each enemy, and um, add if statements to check whether they are they need to bounce or not. And once you do it, um, take a screenshot of what your game is looking like, or if you upload your game some, somewhere, put it in the comments. So link, give us a, a, an image of what this is looking like for you. So now pause the video and work in your challenge. Welcome back. Let's add a couple of enemies just to show you how uh, how that can be done. And I'm also gonna I'm gonna be using an, an array so that we can instead of creating if statements for each enemy, we can actually use um, a for each loop to check um, the 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 bouncing if the bouncing is required for all of them. So um, let's go back to our code and. I'm going to create here an, an array, so I'm going to be called this enemies. I'm going to do one enemy first and then I'll show you how it can be done with an array. So contra.sprite and the location can be um, somewhere somewhere in the middle, um, maybe, maybe x100 and y can be 130. The image will be contra.images.enemy and we'll give it a velocity. So the velocity will be something like 1.8. Uh, make sure that the, the enemy is included in update and also in render. So the enemy will be rendered on top of everything else. Whoops, this is render. Okay. So this should at least give us the enemy moving, right? So we've got the enemy there. So the location in here, I'm, uh, I'm gonna enter those locations and make it so that it bounces. So what you'll do is that in um, an update, before you, you run the update method of your enemy, so somewhere, maybe somewhere here, I can do uh, enemies, bouncing, enemy bouncing, um, we'll do an if statement. So if enemy.x is less than 32, which is about two, two tiles, then we will, um, we will set the position to 32 so that we, we're not beyond that by, by, any, by any means. And we are going to change the. We are going to set the speed to to go uh, positive. Also, if the so this is if it reaches the left side, and if it reaches the right side, we're going to have an else if enemy dot x is uh, greater than say two hundred, then enemy dot x should be two hundred, and enemy dot dx should be um, minus one point eight. So instead of actually doing it like that, we can we can simply, in this case, we want this to be always positive. So we can do math.abs, the absolute value of the of the velocity that it currently has. So you can have enemies with different speeds, basically. And in this case, that's negative. Let's see if this works. So we have our enemy now uh, bouncing. And that was the, the challenge. So adding more enemies would just be basically copying and pasting this code and putting in, putting them in different places, maybe even using different images. So we keep on opening this file, so I'm gonna close it. Um, so what I'm gonna show you now is how you can do this with an array so that you don't have to do it manually for each enemy. So instead of having this enemy variable, I'm gonna have an array of enemies. So that will be the first element of my array, like that. And 
I can add more enemies in this manner. So that will be one enemy. Uh, let's say that we have another one here, another one here, and another one here. So this one can be, they can all start on at the same X, but um, we can put them maybe maybe like uh, 30 from each other or something like that. This can be like something like 80 and something like uh, something maybe, I don't know, 110. And the speeds also can be different. So some of them can be maybe very slow. Some of them can be like super fast or somewhere in between. And then, then in in inside of of uh, update, um, we can use a for each loop because then we'll be doing also more other things as well when it comes to collision detection. So I'll do enemies dot for each, and so this will be an individual enemy. So for each enemy, that individual enemy will actually be checked for the for position and made bounce. And also we are going to update that individual enemy. So I'm, I'm just putting everything in the same method. And uh, when it comes to when it comes to uh, rendering, also just a, an easy way to do it is just to, to run the same sort of loop. So you can just do the exact same thing. And in this case, enemy, so you could also use the, the map function. Okay, so let's see if that works. So we've got now all these enemies, they're in different locations and they have different speeds, they all bounce. So there you go. We've got now this this basic enemy, enemy bouncing working. And what we still have to do is actually do the collision between the enemy and the and the player and so that you lose you, you lose if that happens. So we're going to be doing that on the next lesson.